from Triangle Bowl in Longview. We're here for the title match of today's JBT event, and we got nine bowlers bowling in it, or seven bowlers bowling in it, and I'll explain why here. As we're in our Rising Tide format, here's our Rising Tide scoreboard. I'm so happy that this gets on camera. That's our tide. Bowlers have been trying to stay afloat above the tide. They've been doing that uh, game after game. We've been eliminating more and more bowlers each game until these are the final uneliminated bowlers. It's not a stepladder where they're playing each other. They're simply playing one more additional game. Because after that, we would have eliminated six bowlers. That's more than our left. So whoever is on top after this game wins it all. In the scratch division, John Jordan has a commanding lead. I think he uh, spared in the first to win. <laughs> he still, he's tasked if he would have to happen to John here to uh, give back this title to somebody else. But there's still a lot on the line for our other three bowlers, as you see their overall plus or minus scores there. Different situation in the handicap division where it's anybody's game. That little plus number to the left of their names is their handicap, and the big plus number to the right is their overall scores plus handicap. So that's truly anybody's game. They're all bowling that match here to the right on 29 and 30 as Kyle Hayes gets himself a double to open up the title match. Josh Alvarez looking to win his second career title up on the left. This is the third frame and he opened in the second. And the third bowler in the trio is Nick Bruchetta, who is, uh, when he is on, he is as on as anybody. And he uh, snuck in as the final bowler in the cut today at plus 60 and uh, took off from there. Got something like 750 scratch for his next three games to leap into the lead here. And he's got a uh, 30 and 32 pin cushion respectively with a double working and way left on that one only leaves the five. He just uh, steps up there and cranks it and hopes it goes in the right place and it sure has been lately. Kyle a different kind of bowler just directly down the boards. Comes up high that time. So most of the action we're going to focus in on handicap because it's still to be determined. We'll catch some of our scratchers as well as Jordan's going to cruise to Oh gosh, his third title? Somewhere in that general area. And a powerful guy. Bowled on Bourbon Street today, which is almost as easy as house, but not quite. Most house shot ratios are around 10-11 to 1. Bourbon Street, a 6.2 to 1 ratio, but that's a lot more room than we give him most of the times, and our top bowlers lit him up. A very relaxed Josh Mullen here. He's in fourth, so he's got nothing to lose at all this game, and he's opened up with a double. Ah, make that three in a row. Stand left, throw right, use all that power and watch the pins fall. Connor Jackley, I don't think we've ever seen on our webcast before. Happy to get him some action on the show as he opens spare, strike, spare, strike. He's sitting in second, so he actually, I would say, has the most pressure in this game. So you don't want to drop out of that second place position here if you can help us. Points on the line, money on the line, slightly bigger plaque on the line, <laughs> all of that stuff. Also, the first time in the webcast for Tyler Porter. Tyler's come as close as oh, Tyler's come as close as anybody to uh, winning an Ebonite bonus ball today. We gave out or said we'd give out a ball to anybody who shot 279 or better today. I thought for sure we'd give out minimum what five balls minimum. Wouldn't have been surprised if we gave out double that. We've given out zero, even though 240 and better games have been utterly common here in the last three hours and no one's gotten up to that 279 level which is amazing not even 270 <laughs> did luke miss that spare because he would have had 270 something that one game anyway regardless uh no one's no one's approached it which is surprising and evan i think is correct when he says people start to think about it maybe just squeeze it a little bit and even on a forgiving pattern that's all it takes the two-handed porter no oh. Has a chance to make the first 7-10 in JBT webcast history. We have never had one made on camera. We've had a big four made on camera. Evan, who did it? If I ask about anybody, who do you just default to say in this tour? Oh, we were talking? I'm sorry, Kyle King? <laughs> yes. Oh, Kyle. I didn't know you were talking to me. I said Evan. Oh, I thought you were joking like I picked oh. it up. Oh, no, no. Oh. Ruketta four nines, meanwhile. In his last frame, that's not going to help his cause at all. So... Bruchetta with everything to lose, and Hayes and Alvarez really locked into second or third, so pressure is on them. Ooh, way wide for Nick that time. Even on this shot, that won't get wide. That's the Bruchetta MO, though. It can look like he's never going to hit the head pin the rest of his life, and before you know it, you look up and he's got eight in a row. That's just the way, it's just the way he is. You never know what you're going to get. Jackley here shooting in the third. Um, Jordan did church in his last ball. He's got 77 through 5. 
uh, the difference <laughs> is 107. So listen, that's only yeah. Though. That's a lot. It sounds like an impenetrable number, but give Mullen five in a row here. But the problem for that is. Jackley needed to be the one with front five right now because Mullen's deficit is 160. So if he shoots 300, Jordan would have to shoot in the 130s. There's a 410 that's going to be really close. Nice try from Connor right there. Josh, a quickly improving bowler. He literally practices every single day at Highline Lanes. And uh, paying off for him big time right now as he's uh, having himself a great fall. Mullen's got six in a row over there, so he might lose the title and be the big winner on the day if he can get the only Ebonite bonus ball. 2,000 bucks up for grabs and Power Bowl today. That didn't get hit. We tried, guys. <laughs> Couldn't have offered much more. Big shot here for Nick. Spare working in the six. Oh my goodness, any two four tens. Four eight tens, I should say. Getting down to nervous time here all of a sudden for the handicap title. Hayes from Clee Ellum, good luck getting across the hills today. It's been snowing all day long. It's still coming down outside. They said it wasn't too bad over the past, and that's a big strike on the Brooklyn side. Look out! Real nice try at the split. That's how you have to make that one, but instead it's two out and got ourselves a situation. So the big storylines here are can Nick hold on and can Mullen shoot Bills for at least 279 and Connor unfortunately just not able to put the pressure on Jordan to make it interesting over there. Jordan uh, is coming back to the field but he's earned himself a huge cushion. Meanwhile we also have our women's series title match going on over here as two of the better ladies in the Northwest. Yeah, everybody knows Michaela Douglas tearing up the tour on the female side again. Also finished fifth in the main division today, so boy girl simply doesn't matter for her. She's taking on Courtney Couch, Courtney back from school, the cameo appearance. And they just underway over there in the women's series match. Alvarez 6 tens and spares it up. So they both have to beat Nick by 30 plus pins. Oh, and Nick slides by the 10 pin. Oh my goodness. Their handicaps are similar. Josh gets one less pin than Nick, and Hayes gets seven, 18 more than Nick, and there's a double. So right now, I think it's Hayes with the slight advantage, but it's going to come down to close, really, really close over there. Meanwhile, Mullen has seven off camera to the left. Here's Porter shooting in his sixth frame. Nice shot there from Porter. The flawless form of Michaela Douglas. Michaela is off to the Midwest for school next year. She made a decision. Happy for her there. Well, that's a big split from Alvarez right there. Here's Mullen for eight. You betcha. All right. Big shot from Buketta, meanwhile, getting that strike. Do you want to do the board or do you want to talk the rest of the way? So I want you to put their game in the opposite color and then the new plus or minus in the next box. Oh, Alvarez chops that 310. My least favorite makeable spare in the whole world. Nice shot from Jordan. A well-deserved title for him, by the way. A different format where you don't have to bowl that extra title match. In most bowling formats, you kind of have to win a tournament twice. Uh, no stepladder today, so that's a really good day for John to decide to lead the field by a, what proved to be an insurmountable number. Seven off that double for Hayes. Tightens things up some more. Hard to tell exactly where we're at here. Alvarez keeps himself alive by striking there. And we'll get a little more of our day's champion, the powerhouse, John Jordan. Ooh, ringing 10 there. Mandatory spare for Hayes. Yeah. A lot of different ways to leave the seven on that one. Fortunately, he didn't find one of those ways. Big spare for him. Every mark big handicap division. Huge shot for Nick with the strike working here in the ninth frame. Just tried to tried to will that six spin down on the Brooklyn shot there. He is going at a 160 pace. First things first, cover up this single pin. 
Mullen did not get the ninth shot over the right. Oh, man. By the extra coat of paint on the pin, Nick spares up his six spin, my goodness. Tricky little 2-5 for Hayes to shoot out at the ninth. So Mullen does not shoot the 300, and with that seven count, will not shoot the 279. And amazingly, we went bonusless all weekend long. That wasn't the intention, folks. <laughs> we were, Ebonite was all prepared to give out a bunch of bowling balls. We'll try again some other time. Oh, and that is a huge first strike in the 10th for Alvarez. He's got 191 max. And he's getting one less pin than Nick, and he trails Nick by 33. This could come down to the last shot here. And another 7-10 for Michaela over there in the pocket. Wow. Josh needs it. Oh, Josh has it. I'm telling you guys, if you're watching this at home, get out there and practice. There's so much less practicing going on these days than there used to be in the bowling world. You just practice being in this situation over and over again. Here's Nick's shot in the 10th. Oh, what a break there for Bruchetta as the pocket 7-10 were the last two to fall. So we're going to get that score filled in as soon as Josh gets his fill ball and try and piece together where we stand here. As we don't usually have... Uh, Nine finalists going at the same time. Every pin could matter there for Alvarez. Be beautiful finish for 191 scratch. Which is 210 for his game, which finishes him at plus 232. And that might have been a straight uh, title winning double there from Bruchetta. And I think it is. But we'll see here. Hayes still has something to say about that. So 178 with the fill for Nick. And we'll see before we'll see before Kyle throws his tenth frame where we stand here. Alright, 176 plus pins is plus is 196, which finishes him up at plus 251 overall. Kyle Hayes right now would go strike spare for 199, which would be 237, which would get him to 262. So by my math, Hayes needs to mark to win. There's a mark. 199 with any spare goes plus 37 to plus 262. Kyle Hayes is going to steal the title away in the final game. Wow. Meanwhile, over there, Mullen finishes up with a beautiful 265. He could leapfrog all the way to second place. John, your emphatic champion. Kyle decides to give us one more scare by almost throwing it into the moat. Mom's having a hard Mom, you okay there? Yeah, I'm good. Now you're good. Yeah, because the ball stayed on the lane. Now you're good. Porter and Jackley finishing things up on the left. Doesn't matter if he gets none of them. They're taking a title home to Clee Ellum. But a terrific run from Bruchetta to get back to the title match. Remember, he was the cut going into the semifinals. 199 steals it away. Great job out of all three finalists. Good luck to our ladies the rest of the way. And John Jordan destroys the scratch division field for a big time title over there.